And now, live from the studios of Freedoms Phoenix, Ernest Hancock. back to declare your independence i'm pulling this up for you because i want to make sure you guys get to see this on video a lot of these stories so i'm doing it because because i can here we go all right there it is now what we're talking about uh i want to finish on this is the transfer rate of data now we've had uh, other stories on freedoms phoenix before and what happened it was because there was um uh, so I remember this one guy, oh, his Netherlands, it was uh, Amsterdam or something in the Netherlands, I think, to where he did it for his mom. <laughs> he goes, hey, mom, I can help you. She wanted to see movies and everything, because he could. And he goes, here, let me show you. We can do, you know, a terabyte a second. You know, we can do, you know, boom, there, done, see? Now, the problem is, is that the transfer of the data is one thing. It's the receiving it, the sending it, the processing it, the saving it. You know, I mean, everything's got to get caught up. Now, what they did is, I'll read this from gizmag.com, G-I-Z-M-A-G.com, or you can go to Freedoms Phoenix. World record, 26 terabits per second data transmission achieved. And then, of course, you got a Star Trek thing up there, the graphic. With video content consuming ever more bandwidth, the need for faster data transmission rates has never been greater. Now a team of scientists at Germany's Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, KIT, are claiming a world record in data transmission with the successful encoding of data at a rate of 26 terabits per second on a single laser beam and transmitting it over a distance of 31 miles. The scientists claim this is the largest data volume ever transported on a laser beam and enables the, enables the transmission of 700 DVDs worth of content just one second <laughs> well you know eventually it's going to get faster and you know uh soon we're going to have you know not that much but soon we'll be able to do it let me tell you what i got here when we moved our studios here uh to the farm one of the things that we did that kind of discounted a lot of other locations and properties that we were interested in doing the same thing do they have broadband, high-speed internet? Uh, no. Or it's glitchy at best. Or you had to do uh, phone linking, you know, um, cell linking. So, you know, I'm just like, no, 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 no. I need high-speed cable. So here they had a package called the Ultimate that where you could uh, purchase this new package that would include your internet cable, television and phone and i always didn't bundle them i had like satellite tv on one i had quest you know the regular phone company for my phone and i had cox for internet i liked having you know uh, options instead of one guy being a butthead but since i have cell phones and i have uh verizon coverage on laptops and computers and i have the remote capacity to do the verizon card on even the radio show, we have a mobile unit. Things go bad. I just plug that in, boom, push it, and you never know the difference. And, uh, you know, just be a little box thing. I don't, it's more difficult to do a lot of the other video and all this other stuff, but the radio show would continue. So we said, okay, we got the technology, we'll bundle it. It's called the Ultimate Package. I get downloads of 55 megabits per second, uploads of six megabits per second, where it was taken Sierra you know, hours to edit and put the shows up and everything. Now it's like minutes, you know, boom, done, boom, done, loaded video, done, 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 done. I like it. Sierra, you like it? She like it. She like it very much. So what we've done, it was just, and that's just 55 megabytes per second. That's fast enough that you can stream HD video. You know, we can watch uh, whatever on our television. We could download, do the Netflix online, blah, blah, 55 megabits. Yeehaw. That is not even a blip on 26 terabits. <laughs> I mean, holy moly. A lot of people my age and older 
don't even comprehend what that means. They don't understand. And I, <clears throat> I try to give people an understanding because my yesterday we had a, a friend came over that was also a good friend of Greg Tivnan that's been visiting for the past couple of weeks. He just we just took him to the airport this morning, and uh, Randy, a mutual friend of ours, he's um, you know he he does well. The boy's got some dimes to rub together, and he's built a business over the past few decades. He's you know he's very successful. Well, he comes over, and one thing he said, he goes, you know, I was talking about all the documents that he wanted to scan in because we, we're we have a lot of documents that we have over the past twenty years of all the activism that we've done, and whenever something you know like a, you don't take the lawsuit that you did and you just chuck it, you know, a lot of times you didn't have it you know saved or you're doing it on a brother word processor or you didn't have the ability now back in the late 80s you know uh computers what's that so what we did is we had uh a lot of hard copies of different things and then say things that we printed and a lot just everything we put them in boxes they're semi-separated by year or something like that garage full of this stuff they just finished in the last couple of days donna and some of the activists they came over and they went through and they separated all this stuff by year well now we got to scan it in and there's different things, you know, fast scan, this scan, super scan, docu, whatever kind of pieces of equipment that you put in up like 20 pages, business cards, everything. It scans it and it reads the text and you can put business cards in, you can organize. I saw this at a consumer electronics show two, three years ago in Las Vegas. And I go, yep, it's time. So that was one of the reasons why we came up here to take all that stuff and put it electronically so I can chuck all this because I can get small. I'm not going to be dragging this stuff around me to, you know, the uh, uh, bottom of the ocean collective. We're living off a space station, Antarctica bunker thing. I mean, you know, whatever happens, I need to be ready to go. But I don't want to get rid of all this stuff. There's a lot of information in there. Well, it's certainly important to me and, you know, me and my kids and so on. But it's more than that. It was a lot of research back in the day when you actually had to read the law books. When you would actually shepherdize, you know, go and check for precedents being overturned. I said you actually went through and got the actual law, and you could see what they changed and why, and so you know, way more than you know the scrub version of what's on now. I remember there was an old Star Trek where Captain Kirk was accused of killing one of his crew members and so on, and his lawyer, oh, books, yep, actually, but we read books. None of this. You know, pasteurized, homogenized crap that you guys put into the books. I actually read the book. So he's a great attorney and he gets them off and all that kind of stuff. And as a young kid, I always remembered that. And keep in mind, you know, this is late 60s, early 70s. And before, heck, I didn't even know there weren't computers. I get old enough or I get in school or I'm getting in high school and I'm going, you know, where are the computers, man? I just saw them on TV. You don't got them? Are you kidding me? Well, you know, you know I just want to go computer working. I mean, you know, that's not ready. All right, all right. I'm sure there's some kids growing up now waiting for the holodeck, and they're getting it. <laughs> Here it goes. It's called, it's called 4D television. So <clears throat> what we were looking at is the retention of all this data that oftentimes just got lost. He was talking about my friend Randy. He goes, you know, I got these old uh, floppy disks that we had of all our stuff on, was it, five and a quarter or five and eight, or whatever it is, the big floppy floppies, you know? So he was saying we took all that stuff, we printed everything out. We had uh, different kind of file versions of everything and boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff, which once he did scan them in, he had to have a docu shredder guy come in and come in a truck. And 10 minutes, he was done. They just big, it was like a wood chipper. They just throw the stuff in there, whoosh, done. Okay, well, that was cool. He thought it'd take a while, but not before he scanned them in. So you get these guys, just ordered today on Amazon. I mean, they're not free, you know, they're a little bit of money, but you take all these documents and you just scan them in then you have it all there on a hard drive. You can compress these files and you get it down to what? You know, 20 years of activism, every lawsuit, every bit of uh, printed material that we have, everything, and I can put it on a thumb drive. What happens when all of human data is not only the ability to store it, but to access it instantaneously, instantaneously from anywhere in a second. The world's changing, and bad guys aren't going to be able to keep up. Think about it. We'll be right back.